would love to sit here and paint this little path with the overhanging bushes and flowers. <laughs> it's so gorgeous with the light coming through. But right now with social distancing, it's not really fair of me to just kind of plop down in the middle of the path and claim it as my own. <laughs> because whenever someone walks by, we have to kind of move out of each other's way and maintain two meter distance. So for now, I need to keep looking for another spot, but I'm definitely going to take some reference photos of this area. This isn't necessarily the composition I would have loved to choose. I might just crop it in and see what I can find there in the distance that's interesting to paint. Spring weather has been so unpredictable lately, uh, but luckily I'm in a position to shift my schedule and take advantage of the days where we have a good amount of sun. This is the trail I walk almost every day and it loops through the forest, offering quite a variety of scenery. And I went into the forest intent on painting a tree, or many trees, but I fell victim to the usual feeling of wanting to paint everything, and the notion that maybe there's an even better spot around the corner. So I made it to this bench, which is the halfway point, and I realized what I had done. And not knowing how much longer the sun would last, I it really encouraged me to pull out my paints and get started. As some of you have seen, this is my new sketchbook that I made myself with Arsh's cold pressed paper and I promised I would film the first page for you. When I got home today, I realized quite sadly that I have barely done any plein air painting this year so far between moving to a new house, new area, and you know, quarantine and all that. It's just been rough for my normal strategy of painting outside all the time. <laughs> As you saw earlier in the video, I was taking a lot of photos along the trail and that is just a normal part of my routine when I go out for walks or go out to paint. On a day like today where everything just looks gorgeous, I am able to capture a ton of reference that really helps fuel my inspiration back in the studio. Today's session was a bit of a struggle because it had been so long since I did watercolor plein air and I felt really rusty with identifying the values and the saturation in the scene but I kept going nonetheless. It was a really gorgeous day. Not only was the sun playing hide and seek but it was quite humid and it took longer than usual for my paper to dry. And these are the kinds of things that make painting outside even more of a challenge, but I still find tremendous value in doing even one simple painting. And that's what it is, just one painting at a time.
For this painting, I decided to do something a bit different and create a box around the majority of the distant landscape elements. And after I finished that, I removed the tape and then I worked on some foreground elements that did not adhere to the same border. And I don't know, I've just been trying to have fun, think of new ways I can paint in my sketchbook and make it more interesting. So just enjoying playing with that concept or that idea of boundary. Another struggle I faced today was that I'm still getting used to my new selection of colors. Uh, at the beginning of May, I completely renovated my entire watercolor collection to be more earth friendly, getting rid of all my cadmiums and cobalts and such, uh, and I am definitely still longing for some of the colors that I cut from my palette. Uh, that itself adds a bit of frustration to the process, but I know I'll get used to them the more I use them. If you can believe it, I'm still waiting after nearly a month for two tubes of paint to arrive, which will be the anthraquinone blue and quinacridone magenta. But once they're here, I can finish the video all about my new palette, and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you all and talking to you about it. All in all, today's session was a success for the amount I learned. Although I wasn't as happy with my painting as I had hoped to be, I'm always so surprised by the drastic differences between painting outside and from a photo in the studio. Uh, I think quite often, well myself included, we get confident in the studio and then we go outside only to realize we struggle to see color or value, and that can be kind of disheartening but I know from experience that this is a skill that can be improved on and I am always happy to spend time in nature doing just that. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and tap that thumbs up button, but especially leave a comment and let me know about your recent plein air adventures or if you still have yet to get started. Hopefully we can all encourage each other. <laughs> Try to stay inspired and I will see you again soon.